It's New Year's Eve, so what are we going to do? We're going to build a PC. Good morning, good afternoon and good evening. I'm as zoomed as far out as I possibly can be. Because, yes, you saw the uh, very cheesy introduction. We are going to be building a PC and it actually is New Year's Eve. I shall just zoom in and prepare my mouse. See, 31st of December. 2018 and I'm doing this quite late because in about 35 minutes or so, whoops, how a shot, I'll be going downstairs to uh, indulge in the yearly phenomenon that is Jules Holland's annual Hootenanny. If you don't know what that is, look it up on uh, YouTube. But for now, we're going to build a PC. So I think the best thing we should do is introduce all the parts in this uh, possible drama. Right, so the first thing we're going to start with, of course, as any build, is this... Uh, Motherboard, which I know I sound sort of confused and I kind of, uh, uh what, what, what is this? But it, it's got no brand on it. It says Agama, never heard of them. I got this in the big uh, mega hall, which hopefully if I've actually edited it by now and put it up, that's what, uh, that's where this came out of. Those four big boxes of rubbish. Let's have a quick look at what we get in the box. Obviously a motherboard. But you get actually the drivers. You get the cables, you get the manual. I have a feeling this wasn't used very much, if at all. But this board is actually really quite good. Let's get it out and show you. So I'm um, probably going to be killing this with ESD as we speak, so I'll make it brief. But um, it's got one ISA slot, which I will not be using. Uh, five PCI slots, an AGP, universal, we love that and one of these modem sound card slots which to be honest was never really used uh, two ID channels, floppy channel and three memory slots but you'd be seeing this and you're thinking well oh that's interesting is it a slot Pentium? more on that later but it is a slot based processor and uh, yeah up next in this uh, very stylish firebox box no it doesn't contain uh, gin based or unicorn based stuff as Firebox usually sells. This is all the other goodies. Let me just uh, show them one by one. So next up is the actual CPU we're going to use for the thing and if this was one of the things you thought it was then you are dead correct. This is an AMD Athlon. This one is actually 800 megahertz and uh, don't know what these things are going to be like. I never had one of these. I did have a slot Pentium back in the day. Pentium 3, possibly 2, I can't remember how much one I had. Um, the fan was shot on it, but luckily I had this Gellard Silent 5 which just fits right on there, so that's going to be nice and quiet for all the computing tasks that we need to do. Uh, next up, and by the way these are in no particular order, is um, plain old optical drive. That there actually came out of an old PC and that is a gravy stain that's been on there for oh, probably well over a decade, I really should clean that off. But this is nothing special, it's your common or garden sort of optical drive, I don't even know how fast it is. Next up is the RAM, and uh, I possibly went overboard on this, this is 512 megabytes of SD RAM. I know the Windows 98 has some problems running with huge amounts, I think 512 is probably overkill, but whatever, we'll find out if that works or not. Next up again, and this is actually something quite interesting, and I'm actually surprised myself that this even works. Um, this actually is going to be the thing we're going to run our hard drives off. Or, not hard drives, something else. So, <laughs> you probably guess what that is. So yeah, this is um, just a generic sort of SATA controller card. And if you look on the back, it actually does say 98 support. So, that'll be interesting to see if that makes any difference at all. But I'm just going to try and see how much we can get out of this system as regards the disk. Next, I've got a network card. The motherboard does have a network card on it, but I believe it's only 10, 100 or possibly worse. This is actually a gigabit card, and this too uh, does have support inside of Windows 98, so hopefully you won't have to get any drivers for that. Um, just, it did come in a bag, by the way, I'm not just handling bare circuit boards. Um, but yeah, that means we can access, if we need to pull files off nice and quick. Not that you know, 100 megabits would actually be bad, but uh, whatever. For sound, I decided to do something a little special, since the there is apparently onboard audio on this motherboard here, but it's it's not really anything special. Um, 
So I decided to go for one of the best. I've gone for this Sound Blaster Live. Sound Blaster Live because it's well, it's one of the best names, and also it's one. It seems to be, I think, from what I've heard, it's one of the last sort of Sound Blaster cards that's actually compatible with Windows 98. So that will be providing all the sound. Well, happy about that. And for graphics, we have this little little thing. Uh, I know a lot of people are going to look at me and go, "Brother, what's wrong with you?" But this is an FX 5200, 128 megabytes. It was cheap. It probably will do the job adequately for what I'm trying to do. Maybe too much. Um, 128 megabytes is all right. Apparently, cards that go to about uh, 512 megabytes can cause problems in Windows 98. So yeah, that's the graphics. And of course, not forgetting floppy drive. I'm not sure if I'm going to be using this, but it makes a lot of sense to have something like this in a Windows 98 machine because, well, it does. It'll also help if I want to read or write floppy disks, you know, just in case for, well, what do you use a floppy disk for? And for storage, um, maybe a little controversial, I'll be putting in an SSD. Now, yes, I know, you're not going to see all the speed from the SSD. You know, it, 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 it'll probably kill it with all the reads and writes that you do, but look, SSDs are dirt cheap now, I don't give a shit. As well as that, we've got a few other little things here. Um, we've got some brackets and whatnot. Oh, and this thing, <laughs> nearly forgot it was tucked in there. I'm also going to be installing a floppy emulator. Possibly, um, I don't know anymore because I don't know if it's going to be using any floppies anyway because the era of games that I'm targeting is going to be kind of different. And I'll get on in just a moment and explain exactly what we're building and why and all that kind of stuff, but we have one more pretty major component to actually have a look at, and I'm going to have to take you off the tripod for that. Oh, and I almost forgot. <laughs> I've got this thing. It's a USB card, but this one is compatible with 98. Right, now I'm going to show you the case. Okay, so this hulking monstrosity that I'm actually struggling to fit in the frame is our PC case of choice. Now I did have originally a completely different case that I should be showing on screen right about now. It was great. I remembered it as being, you know, a great case that I still had that I could use for the for the build, but there's just one tiny problem. The case is MATX, whereas the board that I've got, as you've just seen, is full size ATX. So it's never gonna work. So the hunt started and basically we arrive at this thing. I mean with this case I find it's got a really kind of 90s aesthetic as in sort of the style, but it's black. And uh, that's what I really wanted, I wanted a black PC case. I was originally gonna go for some kind of really modern sort of thing, just, you know, mess things up a little bit, but um, no, we ended up with this. And as you can see, it comes with stuff. It's got a floppy drive, so I didn't need to buy one, but I didn't know that. A DVD-ROM, or is it CD-ROM? Oh no, CD-ROM. And a writer, and a card reader, all of which are probably gonna come out anyway, but I may just leave the floppy in there. Pretty good, pretty good deal. Um, I'll show you inside the case in a few seconds, but this is the bit that actually confused me. It opens in a very peculiar way. So I'll just turn the case around and I'll show you exactly what I mean. So I remember when I got this thing, I was yanking at the sides, you know, getting my fingers into the usual places, trying to pull the sides off. And then I realized, actually, wait a minute, that's not how you do it. See this screw up here? Well, let me just show you. So once you've taken a screw out, you then pull the back section off very elegantly and then you just simply lift a side section. Of course this is the wrong way around but I'll revert the case to the other position and then show you what the inside looks like. But yeah, that's that's how you get it open. Bit of a mess of cables right now because it's not a fully modular power supply or even semi-modular. There's the cables for the card reader. But it's really good, it even comes with a fan and actually one thing I was really surprised at is I took a quick look at this uh, when I got this about a month or two ago. It's got a Be Quiet power supply in it. I won't be using that, however. I will be using this substantially cheaper 400 watt wind power that actually came with the other case. Uh, only real reason is it's not really a special PC, and besides, that power supply is too good for what this is. So that's going to probably go on the old PC, because I've currently got a... Well, it's alright, but it's a reasonably generic power supply that admittedly is more powerful, but this is a Be Quiet, and these are pretty good. Although it does look like somebody has gotten into it at some point, but I don't know, it should be fine. So, um, no fan on the front. At least I don't think. No, it doesn't look like it. But this is a really spacious case. I mean, this is going to be 
fantastic to put things in. And so I should probably spend a little bit telling you about uh, what this is all about. But first I think we should probably take all of these components out that I'm not actually going to use. And we're just going to do a little time lapse for that. What do you reckon? You seen this? The fan was held in by a wood screw. See? That's not a fan screw. Let's continue. So that's all the stuff removed. I've got some useful things. There's a card reader there, although I, I think it's looking by the connectors, it's just, yeah, it's the usual trick where they've got two USB ports, well, USB 3 on the front. They give you those on a header and it's just USB 2 for the card reader. But hey, you know, I could go on something. Two nice optical drives. I mean, that light on DVD writer is actually not bad. I could end up putting one of those back in actually. So. What I'll have to do is compare mine, but um, yeah, so they've got a power supply and what looks to be a pretty grotty fan. Now, I know you can clean this up and heck, it's probably good enough, it's three pin, but um, I'll be replacing this with something better when we come to build the PC. And it looks like it's nearly 11 o'clock, so I'm going to try and see if I can fit some components in, although I can't promise anything. Oh yeah, and this is why you need... Uh, not to sit on things because I've just bent the panel and then bent that. Oops, but we can fix it, don't worry about it. Luckily um, the side panel went on alright, although some sticky gunk over there. Phew, I didn't wreck it. Okay, let's put stuff in it. Okay, so I've transferred to the bed because I think it was going to be easier than actually putting it on the desk. Um, I assume all of the things that I need are in there. I think I'm just going to go backwards and I'm just going to put the power supply in. Okay, so the power supply is in at least. I got it the wrong way around of course the first time. Such as me. There's all the front panel stuff which looks like it's all intact. Somehow I've got to find out how to get this board in. Okay, now before anyone sort of says, oh, but you're not putting the IO shield in. Why even you put that in? I didn't actually get one. So whoever had this very conveniently and expertly lost the shield. So I've got to try and fit this in blind. And it looks like we are missing several standoffs. Yep, we're missing a few. Hold on a moment. Ah, screw this. I'm going downstairs for some drinks and watching a Jules Holland annual Hootenanny thing, whatever. See you next year. Well, I'm back. Uh, woo! Happy New Year, everybody. We've still got the issue of standoffs, however, which should be solvable pretty quickly because I've got my box or screws. I should have some standoffs in here somewhere because yeah there's one. It's got to put two in and that should be alright. Seems I've got to be careful as well because some of these standoffs are slightly different sizes and um, that wouldn't be good for the board. So um, bear with me a second. Okay, so I've got all of those standoffs in. I think that's all there is. Um, so let's try the fitment of the motherboard again. Now the board is in, but there's still a few issues here. Like there's a standoff there and a hole there where there isn't anything. But you see, the problem is if I just lift that out the way there's no way for that to go in because the middle one would actually be sitting here. I don't know what those holes are for. Let's put this back in anyway.
I'm going to use my iFixit screwdriver because at least the damn thing's magnetic. Encountering an interesting issue where I don't seem to be able to get the screw in. See, some of these standoffs are minutely different. Hold on a moment. Okay, so I have, as you can see, solved the little standoff problem. All the standoffs that actually matter are in and they do accept these screws that I'm putting in, which, you know, maybe it was the screw, I don't know. Anyway, I'll just get these in and uh, you can watch if I fail again. So, uh, what's the next component we can put in? Possibly the graphics card. All right then. Tell you what, I'm, I'm gonna just put all of the components in. I probably should have put the CPU in afterwards, but nah, who gives a shit? Cards first. Already, I seem to be thwarted. There's these, there's these um, things here which I can't get out the slot covers. Oh god! How was that even done? Oh, hang on, hang on. I've got to basically smash them out. I think. You know how you get them out? Brute force and ignorance. Just stab them out through the back. All right, let's continue. Okay, so my um, camera card filled up just there, uh, unfortunately, and it looks like my um, battery's about to go as well. I'll have to fix that somehow. Awesome. So all the cards are in, and I'll just give you a view over the other side. Um, I'm missing a slot cover, but I, I've got some elsewhere that I'll just put in a bit later. But uh, check that out. So I think what we need to do is I'll slot the CPU in. And then we'll get going on the drive slots, which um, should be fun. Back in a sec. So as you can see, I found two slot covers just here, and I've installed them. They're actually from my new PC, my current PC. Um, it's doing quite well. I've distributed its slot covers among a few machines. Anyway, time to install Le CPU. And I assume that's pretty much it. Neat, I guess. I seem to remember there were some clip things around here somewhere. I'll put them in later. But what I can do is just smooth that down there, if it will go under. And um, I think the next thing we'll do is the RAM. Yeah. And there we go, the RAM is in. Don't worry, I did check the manual and there doesn't seem to be any particular you know, slot to put them in because I don't think this even supports dual channel. There was no mention of it anyway. So checking that in. Right, okay, so we possibly can move on to the front now. I'm gonna try and make this as quick as possible because I'm not really gonna be connecting anything up tonight. Okay, so I've got two optical drives here, I've got uh, the one I was going to put in here, which is actually a DVD-ROM, and then I've got one up here, which is a found since is actually a CDRW, and it looks like this one might be better. I'll show you. The first one is an MSI model, um, as can be evidenced down here, and those are its values. It does 48 read, 16 times rewrite, presumably, and then 48 times write, perhaps. I don't know. 
it's because it's an RW drive. I don't need it, but it's what I've got. Um, so 48 appears to be the fastest. The one below, which is the one that I had originally that I was thinking about putting in, is a DVD RW. I know that because I used to use it. This one's values are that. Now the 40 times one is in reference to um, the CD read capability. Middle one is rewrite. The last one is DVD read because it's one of those, you know, faffy ROM drives. Although I do remember writing in that. It probably can write that. I don't know. I don't really care. Um, but I would think the other one, since I'm not really probably going to read any CDs, would be the one that came with it. So let's put that one in. They're both IDE anyway. This is the light on that also came out of that other machine. As you can see, that one is SATA. The other two are both IDE. And while I could couple this in with the SATA card, really I just want to leave that for the hard drive. So this one will be kept for something, whatever that might be. And uh, yeah, let's just install this one. Little tidbit for this drive here. It wasn't originally black. See that? It's been painted. Fair enough, it seems to work. It actually had me fooled. And for a moment I thought this whole case had been painted, but no, it's definitely black. Oh well. First drive in. Okay, so that drive is at least placed in there, but I've got a little bit of a problem which I will uh, just explain here. To fill up the gap, on the other case originally I bought these trays and I mean that was the other case that turned out to be an M80X. Those little things were a lot different then. I'll just lay these in here and show you what the problem is. You see we don't have enough blanking plates and initially what I was going to do was stick what the floppy down here, I was going to put that in there along with the emulator below it. But as you can see I've already got a floppy um, and if I moved both of them to there I don't have a blank cover for this. So I will, at least for part of this, still have to use my original plan so the emulator could go here. Um, but what I also bought for it last time, on just completely on a whim, is this. A zip drive. And I had actually latterly decided I wasn't bo going to bother putting this in. But I think at least until I either get another slot cover for here or another one of these, I'm going to be in a, going to have a problem because if I take that out, then pretty much we're going to have a big gap. So <laughs> either or, but at least if I do it this way and put in a drive, I'm probably not going to use. I mean, I might connect it up. Then I guess it'll work out all right. But first thing I need to do is just screw these drives in place. I've put the drives into the surround, so there's the floppy emulator. Very nice. I've took the driver CD under there so I don't lose it. Put that back in there. Oops, and things are going wrong. And there's the zip drive. Now what I've got to do is clear space somehow and fit all these things in. I'm debating whether to swap my floppy around, but to be honest, if that floppy works, I may as well just keep it in there. It's just too much of a job. So that stuff will be a spare. Right, let's put it on its side and um, and screw it. I mean, put it in. Yeah, screw it. That was right the first time. Okay, so there we go. Optical drive, floppy emulator, zip drive, and yeah, everything else is in there. That's pretty much it for the moment. I think what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna probably pack up tonight because I'm actually really tired. And then we'll put everything in tomorrow. But basically, if I just put this down, we have everything in there. The motherboard, all the drives are in. There's fans to go in yet, and cabling of course, but uh, we will do that tomorrow, so good night. And we're back working on the old PC. Psych, it's the Windows 98 machine. 
I'm probably going to do that quite a lot anyway. Um, I haven't done much yet. I mean, it's like seven o'clock on the first, so it's it's pretty much several hours. I didn't bother getting up for much today. Um, I did actually eventually, what I have done, I didn't bother filming this, is I have replaced the floppy because the other one was looking a bit crusty. Although on further inspection, it might not be crust. Because I mean, see that? Ugh, it was definitely dusty. The thing about it is, see that in there? It's also painted. Which you can kind of understand really because the era when this thing, this case probably came from and, and the guy mentioned he had used it years and years ago. Um, that is the floppy from his first PC apparently. A little story time for you. They would most likely have been beige and there would be very few things that were actually black um, in this sort of size. I mean, you, of course, remember the old IBM drives that are like double the height of that? They're black. But um, nothing like this. Anyway, what are we doing? So there's still a lot of cabling mess in here. This thing... I've I've had a look at the motherboard manual and there's literally nothing in it which explains what those clips are for. When I mean, we got it here, a gamma always make you ahead. Ugh, slightly shonky um slogan there, but never mind. This is what it is actually, I forgot to preview this. So it's a via chipset. Blah 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 for one of these. Hopelessly generic. So we look in there. Uh, got a diagram on the motherboard, always useful. I'd refer to this when installing the RAM, but as I say, this doesn't have any two-channel support, and that, actually, is the correct slots to put it in if you want two sticks. Which I'll verify later if you want, but anyway, when I look through this thing, let's put it up here, that's pretty much all it mentions about installing the CPU. That little section in there. And obviously when this motherboard's in the package, this frame isn't even attached. Of course, mine was, but folded down. So, pretty much, I don't know what to do with them. So, here they are. They've got a little diagram on the packet. There. Let's see if I can zoom in, because trying to put it close doesn't work. So, I've got to pull these up. Unless they're just protectors, and you, you don't do anything with them. But this was sealed until last night. I'm going to see what I can find about this, because I'm, I'm dying to know. Like, I want to actually use these if I'm supposed to. Okay, I seem to have cracked it. See that at the top, which says SECC2-SEPP? That's a specific kind of uh, chip. And if you look here, I actually found out what it is. So, quite why this... It makes reference to, like, Pentium 2, but so quite why this is actually in the box, I don't know. It seems to be, like, a universal mount. I do know that, like, slot A CPUs for, for AMD physically use the same slot and possibly the same mount hardware as Pentiums, except it's flipped 180 degrees because they didn't want people to be putting them into Pentiums, which is understandable. But it looks like it's actually meant for that. Whereas this one here, like the Pentiums you could get with a fully enclosed plastic slot. I do actually have a Pentium 3 that looks a bit more like this one where you can see the circuit board. And uh, it's meant for those. So these retention clips are designed to fit CPUs that otherwise, you know, for some reason maybe the mount isn't right or, you know, they're not being secured correctly, so that's to compensate. So, in all likelihoods, I don't even need to use them. So I think what we'll do next, actually, we need some ventilation. There's a fan that should go there, but in the front, I can't really see any fan ever having been there. And it looks pretty much like you'd have to take this front panel off to either get inside to put the fan in between it, or even to screw it in from the other side. I mean, it does look like you can do that from the other side. I don't know which way around this should go, whether it should be putting the fan on the inside or the outside. Probably from the inside, actually, because it's got to have room to pull the air through. And if you put it on that side, yeah, sure, you've got the vents. They actually go all the way underneath as well. Whatever, either way, we've got to take the front off, so I've got to explore how to do that. And uh, that looks like how you do it. There's like lots of little screws. Actually, no, there it is. This is the moment we find out how disgusting this is. Yeah. Oh. Actually, that is uh, not too bad. Looking at everything there, I'm pretty sure we're just going to have to stick the fan underneath this. Because you would never get a fan. You'd probably get one of those like little side fans on the front. But then again, you haven't got room to pull the airflow. And it's probably going to pull it through here. I suppose I better show you what fans I'm going to use. 
Okay, so here's the fans I've chosen. We've got my old Corsair fan out of my uh, current PC that's just purring away down there that I replaced with a Noctua, but it's a really good fan and it was it's adequate to use as the exhaust, you know, can't go wrong. And then I have this leftover Arctic F12 that was planned for something else, but eventually never got used. Let's get it in. All right, here it is. Fan is in the front. Interesting, I've just noticed something. There's a buzzer, but there's also a speaker in there. So I can choose between a buzzer and a speaker. I think for this one, gotta be a speaker. The front is fully back on. Got the fan there, got the fan in here. Now, what I've found is uh, the fan connector, if you can see it, is under the AGP actually. I'll tip this for you. There, it's just below the graphics card right above the AMR slot. I have a feeling I'm gonna to have to probably, by the looks of things, take the graphics card out again. No biggie, but that's where we've got to put these fan connectors in and I've got to find some kind of splitter. Mm, look at the lightning effect. But I suppose it is nice to know that the connectors come out there just above where they need to go down behind the graphics card. Snakes all the way around there, goes briefly behind the motherboard. It's just basically to get to get rid of that slack. Uh, yeah, oh yeah, on to finding the uh, adapter. Something else I forgot about there when I was looking for the cable um, is the SSD. I hadn't sorted out a mount for it, but luckily I have another one of these things. Uh, I bought two from China, some total of a pound each for these little really cheap trays. But it just means that you can mount this quickly and simply and it'll go somewhere, just probably just under the floppy drive, right there, above the fan perfect place for it so uh, let's get on with that and there it is quickly and simply this by the way is just some super cheap SSD I mean at the time I got it this was before the huge price decreases it was 28 pound for a 120 gig um, probably 128 I can't remember <laughs> doesn't really matter but nowadays it costs even less than that um, it's like 19 pound for a 120 gig it's seriously crazy well, I did a bit more. Uh, what I've actually done is I managed to get the power cables fitted as well. Just wish I had something to pull it up there. There's cable tie pulling it on the back. I've put that over here. That's plugged in. As is the floppy drive there. I've got a spare connector here, but well, that'll just sit there. I did have something which was just a floppy drive cable, but I don't really know where that is currently. And this one here is or would power the SSD, but I do have a SATA to uh, Molex power adapter. Quite where it is, I'm not entirely sure, but I think what I can do is I can plumb in like the SATA and the um, the IDE stuff at the moment. Um, I did manage to find a fan adapter, but it's a bit longer and less elegant than I wanted. But these both fans are plugged in. One thing is though, um, the way this has been split, it is a PWM connector. Um, so one of the connectors is just like this, it's missing a pin. So the connectors it does cover could mean it's going to be 12 volts only all of the time. And so I've set the rear fan on that one and the one with all the pins goes to the front fan which you maybe would want to have controlled. But uh, yeah, that's the fan arrangement. Just, it's a bit messy but really what can you do in this? It's, it hasn't got proper cable management. The best I can hope for is to sort of just cascade them neatly and I just tied it at the top here so it wouldn't flap around. And these are pretty tight as it is. This thing I'm probably going to cable tie via one of these holes just so it, um, just in there, just so that it stays a bit more neat because it's currently a bit of a mess. Although, really, I don't, there's no other hole there. Anyway, what I can do is in this mess of wires, I mean, they've got many SATA cables, I'm probably just going to pick out of this lot and uh, connect everything up. It's kind of getting there um, but it doesn't look quite as tight as it used to but the cable for at least the SSD is in the floppy cable is in and sort of the rest of it's tucked up there there's got to be a better way than this I'm pretty sure I do have some round IDE and floppy cables but I'm not going to show you the rest of the room this room is a mess and I've got to move stuff every time I want to get into something and there's cables scattered between various different places so not that I don't like working on this, but I'm kind of done for the moment, for tonight anyway. Uh, we'll pick this up probably tomorrow. 
But it's coming out. It's, it's actually really good. I hope you get it fired up tomorrow. God, that's so fucking cheesy.